Good um, afternoon. This is Deepak, and I'm uh, in my office right now uh, in New York City. Deepak Home Base, 888 Broadway in New York. And uh, this is at the uh, location is uh, between 18th and 19th on Broadway. And uh, I do events here, as you know, uh, we call them satsangs. Sangha means a gathering, and satsang is uh, people who come together to explore the truth. Uh, my favorite uh, quote from Vaclav Haval, the first uh, president of the new uh, Czechoslovakia, or uh, what is now called the Czech uh, Republic, uh, Vaclav Haval once said, seek the company of those who are looking for the truth and run away from those who have found it. So we do these satsangs here in New York and uh, they have become uh, very popular and um, a lot of people come here for meditation, reflection, inquiry, um, exploring techniques like transcendence but ultimately with one intent, uh, personal and social transformation. As you know, uh, there's no social transformation in the absence of personal transformation uh, because ultimately society is made of people. So as we've been doing this, and I'm going to introduce you to some people right now, slowly we have, um, um, we have um, I would say, a number of people uh, who want to together uh, explore the idea of creating consciousness communities, both um, digital consciousness communities, but also uh, live consciousness communities. And because I'm spending so much time in New York, I thought maybe New York is the best place to start. But as I'm seeing your wonderful feedback right now, I would like to know if you would like to join a global consciousness community. So if you do want to join a global consciousness community and build one yourself, and then let's have a ecosystem where we can all connect and actually move in the direction of a more peaceful, just, sustainable, healthier, and joyful world. Uh, we need to do that, especially now that there's so much chaos, confusion, so much polarization, so much conflict, but as um, the great uh, German philosopher Nietzsche said, you must have chaos within you to give birth to a dancing star. So in the absence of chaos, there's no emergence, and now is the opportunity. So as I was talking to uh, my friends uh, and family, both the same thing, uh, in New York, we are now embarking on a very interesting project which is to hold uh, gatherings uh, of people that will engage in collective meditation and self-reflection uh, on the most important issues of our life, starting with personal well-being, health, happiness, joy, peace of mind, equanimity, but ultimately with the goal of uh, uh, reaching that critical mass that uh, will move in the direction of upgrading this uh, collective dream that we're all in. So uh, in the past, you've uh, had me um, uh, in conversation with Lena Nasser. Lena is uh, a young... Um, neuroscientist. She has a degree in neuroscience, in neuroscience and how stories change the brain and how stories are the most effective way of um, bringing about uh, uh, personal and social transformation. And Lena is the CEO of the Chopra Mind Brain Institute, which is an offshoot of the Chopra Foundation and she is helping me with this whole idea of um, helping address chronic low-grade inflammation 
uh, as the number one cause of disease in the world. As I've mentioned before, only 5% of disease-related gene mutations are fully penetrant. So by tackling inflammation, inflammation in the mind, which begins with hostility and anger and resentment and grievances, and ultimately leads to guilt, shame, depression, anxiety, the whole bit, inflammation in the mind, the brain, the body, behavior, and ultimately in the world, everything from climate change to eco-destruction to extinction of species to war and terrorism can ultimately be linked to inflammation. So I'm going to um, actually reverse the camera right now so you can um, listen to what Lena has to say about this um, inflammation project. Ready Lena? I'm going to flip the camera and tell everybody what so uh, you're now seeing Lena and next to her is uh, Nesma and next to her is Susie and next to her is Matt and next to her is Alissa who is uh, a yoga teacher and an Ayurvedic Marma uh, therapist and then we have Tina Marie who is part of our uh, gang here. Hi and the gang of uh, uh, people who are interested in creating a more peaceful, just, sustainable, healthy world. So, Lena, can you share with uh, everyone uh, what your ideas are about um, inflammation? How do we create a global community around it? You had come up with a good name, Home Unity, but now I'll let you do the speaking. Absolutely. So. The idea is our immune system, uh, when we're looking at chronic illnesses, across all chronic illnesses, the common denominator that we found is chronic low-grade inflammation. And so what we find is scientists are always looking at the disease level and studying it. But what we're interested in is let's study the, the, the commonality between all diseases, which starts with low-grade inflammation in the body. And in my experience, what, I, what I've been reading a lot about is how inflammation connects for, to the mind and the body. And so how does it relate to resistance? When we resist who we are, how does that connect to inflammation? Uh, and you've just, you, you do a lot of silent retreats, Deepak. So in, in silent retreats, a lot of the experience at, at, towards the end, you don't need to sleep as much, right? Uh, you, there's less resistance of self and that kind of gives you more energy. And so how does our resistance of self uh, create this inflammation, and how can we remove the resistance of? Right. Okay, so we're back. We're back. Okay. Oh we're back. We're back. So, <laughs> what, so we, where Lena was saying uh, basically was that, uh, you know, if you have resistance to what it is, if you have regrets, if you have uh, anticipation of how things should be, then you're not in flow, basically. Exactly. And uh, flow is our fundamental state of being. Absolutely. And so we want to tackle inflammation yep. and help um, people have a joyful, energetic body, Absolutely. loving, compassionate heart, alert mind, but most importantly, the experience of flow, lightness of being. Absolutely. And so this group that we are been brainstorming and we're pulling you in our conversation right now is how do we create a group that's tackling inflammation on this body, spiritual, mind level where we can let go of the resistance and create more flow in our lives. Mm -hmm. And we don't really know how it's going to look like, which is why we're looping you in to this discussion of brainstorming together. What would this community look like? What would you want to have in this immunity community where we would start to, to, to be a whole together and explore the state of flow? So Lina, you grew up in uh, Saudi Arabia yeah. and um, you wanted to be a babysitter yes. and then you changed your mind. <coughs> Tell uh, a little bit about the story, quickly. Do you, okay, so the, the story is just that when I was little I wanted to be a babysitter, uh, that was my aspiration and not that there's anything wrong with that, but when I went to college I stumbled on this book called How to Care. <coughs>
Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So the book was called How to Teach Math to Black Kids, and it's an incredible book by Muhammad Shahid about an African American classroom that's really not doing well at math until the teacher introduces the African contribution to the math discipline, and you see the students' grades skyrocket. And so what it made me question is how are the stories we tell about ourselves tell tell ourselves. Uh, about who we are shape how we perform and how are the stories told to me as a five-year-old shaping who I wanted to be and the limitations I had to uh, to the dreams I aspired for myself and so I went to Saudi Arabia and started studying stories for young kids and how the stories were shaping their identity and and then I tried to introduce alternative stories uh, to see if new stories that were empowering could actually change the performance of young kids and who they saw themselves and their potential uh, and that's where I started my neuroscience and cognitive psychology studies and and really uh, at, working Harvard. With children. at Harvard yeah, working with with kids okay so and now we want to create the new story for uh, yep. our help people create their own new story right? Absolutely. in the global community Nessa you're from uh, Algeria right I'm from Algeria. Algeria tell us a little bit about your story um, so uh, my name is Nesma uh, I grew up a bit all over the world. My mom was working as a diplomat um, on the development and poverty issues. And so um, from Algeria to France to Ivory Coast to Senegal to the US and along the line many other countries, I was confronted. Oh, we're back. Bye. Bye. So, <laughs> that's since, since we keep getting interrupted, by the way, I'm going to edit this later and it'll be all over social media. But Nesma, you gave your background and what yeah, is your current interest so in exploring consciousness? My current interest is uh, to bring people together and uh, have an experience that allows them to reach to their deepest potential. And I'm interested in doing that through stories as well and uh, through communities that come together and uh, build something that can support that aspiration. Okay, and uh, Susie, you've been helping me uh, with events. Yes. Uh, what are you going to, how are you going to help us out here? I think that we're just going to find places to create space for people to come together. Just like Lena was, just like Lena was talking about, uh, we all we have to recreate what our story is to be able to go and reduce inflammation and get into our flow. And when we're in a silo, we uh, feel and experience more and more depression, loneliness, all of these things. And when we come together in a group of like-minded individuals, then we all get to raise our consciousness together, right? And that's what this whole community is about. So. Okay, yeah. so you're going to help organize events in New York? Absolutely, we'll start then, in New York and then... Uh, then we, through the internet, we help everybody yeah, else we'll, create their own communities, yeah, right? Yeah, in live experience first, and then hopefully we'll create this beautiful digital um, community, and then we'll take it all over the world. But ideas, feel free to offer them. That's why we're talking to all of you guys, too. Yes, Fatima Nesma is from Algeria, <laughs> and uh, Lina is from Saudi Arabia. And people are asking, Lina, what's the name of the book? How to Teach Math to Black Kids by Muhammad Shahid. Okay. So now, uh, Matt, you've been uh, helping me here at yes. uh, ABC Home Base yes. for all these years. And uh, we are going to be using this place for a lot of these reflections and uh, meditations. Uh, and uh, what do you think of this whole idea that we're doing? Well, as uh, a male being represented here today, um, thank you, Deepak. Um, I am. Oh, as soon as I detach, it comes back. Okay, so I know we have been um, interrupted many times. Um, I will, I will edit this and uh, put it on social media. So don't worry. But here is the main thing um, that uh, we uh, need to. Uh, reflect on. First of all, are you interested in creating a global community yourself? Are you interested in participating in this? Because we're going to use our Internet of Wellbeing, which is Jio, to do this. And everyone here that you see, um, Alyssa is next here. And she's, as I told you, a Marma Ayurvedic uh, therapist and a yoga teacher. What is Marma? 
What is marma therapy? Marma, um, there are points on your body, so it helps you to release stress in the body. Um, yeah. You go through the points. It's a and trigger the healing response. Yes. Yeah, so you learn all about these mind-body techniques. Tina Mary, and what's your intention in joining this community? My intention is really to be serving other people and tapping into my highest by creating a community where people can be authentic and vulnerable with what is really going on and quieting their mind and their spirit and grounding in a sense of community. We're hardwired for that fundamental building block of connection and creating that for people where it's not just on social media, where it's in person, where it's visceral, where it's a feeling and connecting to that. That well, me. thank you. So um, I'm going to just conclude right now.